This is Build Your Difference, a podcast created by Blue Artists, a brand platform with one goal, to help great visionaries like you build impressive brands. Every month, we'll bring you insightful tips, knowledge, and compelling stories from successful entrepreneurs and the Blue Artists team on how to create and market a winning brand that does more than just launch a new product or service. It starts an ongoing conversation because you're not just making a brand, you're making a difference. Let's start building. Okay, Pierre, I think last time that we spoke, I got a note from you that said um, Branddesk was moving out of, and I think I used the word beta, but we were actually it was more like development, right? Yeah. We're moving out of development, and as of earlier this month, you are fully into the growth phase. Yes. And I wondered if you could tell us exactly what that means for both clients, both the team members, and so on. Well, you know, most importantly, what it means is that for all, for all brand desk users, we are now focused on increasing user count. So that means, you know, if you are a producer, we're, we're focused on bringing in more artists. If you are a client, we're focused on bringing in more producers uh, to better serve you. And uh, if you are an artist, we're focused on bringing in more clients. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so more we, forward there. yeah, yeah, we, we are really focused on growth now. And I, and honestly, John, we, we couldn't be focused on growth until this time. And we why is re- that? You know, we really had to focus at, uh, at least from the time we opened the doors to Brandesk on making sure that everything was working correctly. Everything was working as intended or that we make, were making course corrections where necessary so that as we increased our numbers, we could create sort of, um, if you can imagine sort of a smooth experience for, for increasing numbers. Imagine like, a, like, a, like, a, like plumbing or something where there's, there's water flowing through a valve and, and you have a, a dial and you're sort of opening and closing that valve to let the water, water through. You want to make sure your tubing is correct. This is a really bad example, but you want to make sure your tubing is correct, <laughs> is, is working correctly so that as you increase the dial, more water can flow through without without the risk of a leak. Ah, so I kind of brought it back home there. But, uh, but, yeah. um, but you know, we learned a lot in the early days. I mean, the first um, May, June, July, August, September. So the first five months of Brand Desk, I can't even believe it's been five months, but the first five months have, have been all about where are the problems? Where are the problems? Because, you know, we tried to think through everything when we were in development for the last five years. But the truth is, you don't really know how people are going to use something until you expose it to them, until en masse they come in and, and start treating it like it's their own. Yeah, and in your mind, you could have um, um, intended purposes for how you think they should use this new tool or whatever it is. But like you said, you won't know how they will actually use it until it's out there and into their hands. Exactly. That's one where you don't have any control, really. Yeah, exactly. And, and on, honestly, on the one hand, it's invigorating. I mean, it really is. It's really cool to kind of conceptualize. I mean, we've spent the last five years, John, mm-hmm. conceptualizing Brand Desk. I mean, it, 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 was in, it was on paper before it was ever built. Sure. It, was, sure. it was schematics. It was test users. I mean, we had a whole a whole phase where we had test users coming in and trying to use the system and trying to break it and just figure out, you know, where are the issues? We did the best that we could, but still that's not good enough until you get strangers in and they say, Oh, this is my home now. And they're going to start rearranging things and putting things the way they think it should be. You, you really don't, you really don't know. And, um, you know, over the past couple of episodes, we've even talked about some of the lessons learned over that period of time. Um, and, uh, and, and, and where we are now, as we sort of, as we sort of close that chapter of, of, of uh, minimizing how many people are in Brand Desk so that we could focus on the problem areas, now we're opening this chapter of growth, scale, which means that we're still gonna have problems. I mean, we're still gonna have surprises. We're still going to have problems but the difference now is that 
we are we are focused on solving them, but we are also simultaneously still focused on growing. So how are we how are we going to do this? Well, Brand Desk Academy is one of our uh, I think really on target solutions to making sure that as we bring in more people, that especially when they're team members, that they have a a much better idea of how to use brand desk before ever get ex exposed to a client. Now I do have to ask, cause you said the word Academy in there and uh, <laughs> we're not talking about a tuition fee now, are we? Because I've got, I got plenty of those to last me a lifetime right now. You know? Yeah. I figure Academy is kind of a, kind of a buzzword, not, not a buzzword, but it's kind of a trigger word. <laughs> a trigger <laughs> word. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and you're not the, let me tell you, you're not the only one. I totally feel you. And um, I, I, I think so. No, there, there are no, 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 we're not charging for Brand Desk Academy. Um, but why did we call it Brand Desk mm -hmm. Academy? It has a lot to do with our intent. And our intent is to give our team members a much, much clearer idea of what it means to work on brand desk and to give them that idea before they actually register to work on brand desk. And honestly, John, it's something that I found was a little difficult to do in any other way, except through this sort of academy format where we're teaching via lessons. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we had options, we could have done a video which we did do, but we found it wasn't enough. We, we could have done uh, online webinars. For, for the first five months of Brand Desk being um, available, we were holding uh, webinars every Tuesday at 1 p.m. on Facebook. And the purpose of those webinars really was to introduce team members to Brand Desk and to get them comfortable with what, it, what, what does Brand Desk mean in, in, in 2020? And, and, and how, does, how is it different from a typical sort of freelance marketplace? But you know what we found with those online webinars was that it was attracting more clients than it was team members. Hmm. So it was, it was difficult because we, we weren't trying to train clients on how to be team members. If, when a client gets, on, gets onto a webinar, we want to talk to them about products. We want to talk to them about how we can you know, solve their problems, not how they can join our team. So it, it became clear that, well, webinars, this is not really working um, because we're not getting the intended audience and the format is just not really conducive to helping someone who's really interested in Brand Desk get a really clear idea of what it means for them if they're working on the platform. So well, so um, uh, two questions. One is, what had you been seeing in the uh, in, in your team members prior to launching of, of Brand Desk Academy that had you say, hang on a second, we need something here to kind of get all the team members on the same page here. And two, could you possibly walk us through, like say, say I'm, an, I'm interested in becoming a team member, right? Um, what can I expect to see it by taking this uh, Brand Desk Academy? How does that process play out? Oh, it's a good question. So let me start with the first question. Um, what really, what was life like before the academy, right? Before for team members, and and I'm gonna say, it uh, it was there was a lot of confusion. There was a lot of confusion, and I'm not happy about that. I'm not proud of it. You know, we built Brand Desk with 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 tools in place so that it could contextually make a lot of sense for the people who are working on the platform. We try to make the options, you know, for, for like as a producer, what do you do? Well, you follow the workflow. So we try to make that very clear. We try to make it, you know, step by step by step as an artist, we try to make it very clear. But, but the, the problem is that even in the simplicity that the platform itself provides, if you're not, if you're not oriented correctly, then you're still going to bring in um, expectations from other experiences from other platforms and that and and those expectations are going to color your perception of the options that we're giving you in brand desk so you know I, I'll give you one quick example um, would be uh, uh, the, the role of the producer um, in a lot of these other freelance markets that role simply does not exist there 
is no producer role. So, so someone who's coming into brand desk, uh, you know, and they're, they're, un, they're of the understanding that, okay, I'm going to be a producer. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to follow work, the workflow. I'm going to follow these tasks and, and help clients and help artists. That's a great, you know, starting point. But if they're coming from the perspective of having worked on a freelance marketplace like Fiverr, where clients are coming in and purchasing gigs and then, and then they're working directly with a client or, or Upwork where they, they, I mean, I don't know what the equivalent on Upwork would be, but uh, maybe the producer's coming in and providing customer service or, you know, someone's providing customer service for a particular client. If, they, if they're coming in with that perspective, then they're going to come into Brandis with a couple misconceptions. One misconception might be how they're getting paid. You know, on some of these other platforms, you know, you can choose to get paid hourly or you can choose to get paid um, as a flat rate. Um, you're, you're in control of what you pitch for your rate. So there's sort of a negotiation that's happening there when you're beginning every project. That doesn't exist on Branddesk. Um, you know, the other thing that doesn't exist on Branddesk is the ability to start completely from scratch as a producer and create your own set of milestones. On Branddesk, we, we give you the milestones. We're, we're telling you exactly what needs to be achieved at each step in the workflow. And that is a game changer because that doesn't exist on any other platform. So producers who, who aren't oriented in that way will look at this. And in some cases, I've seen them think, oh, this is totally optional, which it isn't optional. I, I've seen producers, you know, go through the workflow and only do the tasks that they thought were relevant. And actually that's a big problem because it's designed to be, the, the workflow is designed to be completed in order step-by-step. Step. <laughs> so, so yeah, so, so these are some real problems that we, we I honestly did not even envision people, you know, uh, doing, but it's like once we started to realize, okay, we, we, we do have to have some kind of formal training before someone even gets into brand S. And so one of the, one of the solutions, this is for artists, producers, and guides. One of the solutions that we, we put in place initially was uh, during the onboarding process when someone was being uh, interviewed. Uh, so they'd fill out their application. They'd been invited for an interview and now they're being interviewed during that interview sort of process. We would walk through how to use the system. And at first, that seemed like the most logical approach. Um, it's one-on-one -on -one time directly with the applicant. We can sort of give them a test environment on Brand Desk and sort of help them through their first official project. But the problem with that is that, and, and I guess we didn't totally, and I probably should take ownership over this. So I'll say, I guess I didn't totally factor in the amount of pressure someone would feel, someone would be under in that circumstance where they're feeling okay i need to get this right and it's like it's like they're completely focused on getting it right just for that one moment in time so that they can pass the interview <laughs> okay hmm. so they're it's like they're they've dialed up their their consciousness by 110 percent, so they can be like super focused so that everything that i'm saying or the interviewer is saying is making sense in the moment and they are and they're getting through their first project smoothly with no hiccups but then when they pass and now they're in the system and there's no one there to guide them, it's like now suddenly everything they just experienced is lost. It's, it's almost as if they've, they've memorized the notes they specifically need for the test and they write them from memory. They've passed the test and now all of that they've memorized just goes out the window. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, pr that's exactly, that's exactly it. And, that's not, that's not suitable. That's not a good strategy, you know, no. for, for what we're doing. Sure, sure. Um, so what we did with Brandesk Academy is we said, okay, from this, from this point forward, we, we need to have an environment where before someone can even register for an interview, they need to be exposed to the Academy. They need to really, and we need, basically we need to put our cards on the table and say, hey, look, we don't know you. You don't know us. There is no pressure on your own time. Take as long as you want. Go through this academy. 
And what's beautiful about the academy is that as you go through each course, as you go through each lesson, there is no time limit. You can take as long as you need. And as you answer the questions at the end of each lesson, if you get a question wrong, then it'll tell you and it'll allow you to repeat the course, that particular lesson, until you're, you're comfortable and until you've gotten all the answers correct. So it, it, there is no time pressure. I mean, someone like me, if I was applying, I need that environment of no time pressure so that I can sit down and really digest what I'm learning and focus on passing the, the quiz that occurs at the end of each lesson. Um, and, and so that process repeats itself for each lesson all the way until you've completed all of the lessons necessary in order for you to be approved for that particular role. And so, mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. so after you've, after you've completed all the lessons, then at that point, Brandesk Academy then invites you to register for a formal interview. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And what I was going to ask is you mentioned uh, the, the Academy has a number of lessons and each at the end of each lesson, there is, uh, I think you said a quiz. Yeah. Um, and you did say that the, the individual taking taking the, the lessons, they can do it on their own time. So if they wanted to spread it out over a number of weeks, they could. Um, but suppose I want to sit down and knock this out in a day. Is that something feasible that I could do? Or is this course intended to be designed for four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks long? That's a, that's a great question. No, it's not intended to take that long. Um, it's really intended to, to, to be completed in one sitting of about 30 minutes. Okay. So the entire course for, for, for each role. So if you wanted to do the course for all three roles, then you're looking at about an hour and a half, 30 minutes per course. Um, but if you're focused on just one role, like let's say you just want to be an artist or you just want to be a producer, then you're looking at about 30 minutes of your time to sit down and comfortably go through the course. Um, it is not something, now that's today, that's today. Um, right. Today, at this moment, it's not designed to take more than between, tw you know, between 20 to 45 minutes of your time because we do, we do want it to be something that doesn't feel daunting. However, I can imagine a world in a few months from now, maybe even maybe in a year or two, where, where the, the academy actually becomes more intense and might mm -hmm. actually take longer to complete. Um, because here's the thing, we are constantly learning from our team members. We're constantly learning from our producers and our artists and our guides to understand what's working and what's not working. We're definitely an evolving platform and things are going to change for the better. That We're gonna keep looking at where we're weak and we're gonna try to become strong in those areas. And Every time we make adjustments, we need to update the course. And as we add more complexity into Brandesk, and believe me, if you were to see our roadmap, for, for where Brandesk is going to go over the course of the next five years, it, it, it's not going to look anywhere near what it looks like today in even one year's time, okay, let alone two or three or four years time. So it will be a completely different beast because we're going to keep evolving it, adding complexity and just totally morphing this thing into something that it just keeps getting better and better and better. Um, and so the Academy it is going to become more complex over time. One of the, I'll, I'll give you a sneak peek. One, one little thing that I've been thinking about and that we are going to be building into the Academy soon is we want freelancers to, to have a clear idea of what their options are when it comes to healthcare. Interesting, right? Interesting. Because you, you don't normally think about that when it comes to an online platform. But the truth of the matter is that our goal for Brandesk is to become a workspace where, where you could conceivably do all of your work, which means that if you are a freelancer and you're dedicating 100% of your working time to working on Brandesk, then that means that we need to do a good job of, of empowering you to understand what are your benefits in terms of, uh, in terms of healthcare equivalents, in terms of uh, uh, dental e equivalents, you know, things that you might 
normally think about when you're applying for a full-time job in terms of benefits with a full-time job. Now, there's some things we can't do because we're not a full-time job. We are a gig-based system. But that doesn't mean we can't structure the experience in a way where we're our freelancers feel like they're not missing any of those benefits. They're being, we're giving them the right alternatives or the right uh, concessions to, to make sure that they are just as protected as someone who might be working at a, you know, a, a full-time job experience. So, so we do have big goals and, and, and the Academy is going to be part of that process. Um, so over time, it, it'll be very interesting to see how that, um, how that evolves. Thanks for listening to this episode of Build Your Difference. If you'd like to learn more about how Blue Artists can help you develop a distinguished brand that inspires and engages a growing audience, then please visit us at www.blue-artist.com and be sure and subscribe to our monthly podcast for the latest tips and trends in brand development and marketing. And remember, you're not just making a brand, you're making a difference. Start building yours today 